Well, let's turn to some other news now. And there is an elephant in the room at the annual scientific meeting of the Australian and New Zealand College of Anaesthetists in Brisbane today. That is the topic of mental health among this very high-risk group of doctors. The emotional welfare of anaesthetists is something the Australian Private Hospitals Association needs to be discussed at the meeting. And they were responsible for putting this life-sized elephant inside the convention centre. Professor David Scott is the president of ANSCAR. He joins me now live from Brisbane. Professor, thanks so much for giving up some of your time before this kicks off today. Now, this elephant in the room, presumably because this is not spoken about. Hello, Kumi. Thanks for inviting me on. Yes, the idea of an elephant in the room is basically to open up people to the conversation about looking after each other and discussing the issues of, of personal health, but particularly personal mental well-being. So how high risk is this group, particularly among anaesthetists? How high is it and why is it this high? Anaesthetists are amongst one of the critical care professions which manage a lot of high stress situations all the time. And we've identified that anaesthetists often uh, experience a high level of stress in their workplace. Uh, they experience uh, depression, as do many other uh, medical specialties, but probably more so with anaesthetists. And we're really concerned about that, you know, the tip of the iceberg where people can actually self-harm, uh, which, is, which is a tragedy and a loss to everybody concerned. So what we want is to really support people in in their workplace, uh, as everyone should be doing, you know, ask how they're going, keep an eye out for each other, but also, also to emphasise to people, uh, and anaesthetists in particular, have a GP when you're feeling under stress or under pressure, talk to your GP, talk to your family. We hear of this so often in so many professions uh, in that high risk area, whether it's uh, uh, soldiers or frontline responders like firefighters and paramedics that, uh, you know, look out for each other. But, but, but does it actually carry out in real life? What's the culture like, say, within the medical industry? Do people feel like they can actually show that weakness, show that vulnerability? Look, we're getting a lot better at it. I think the, the problem is the... Um the risk is that uh, people won't talk about it. And the other thing which we're concerned about is that after a really stressful event, and, and that happens in obviously in, in uh, military environments or in civil, civil resuscitation and, and the ambulance service or in trauma or in the operating room, it's, not, um, it's necessary to debrief. It's necessary to look after people after something stressful has happened, as well as preparing them beforehand. So that's, that is a very important area and we need to be alert for it. Are, are we doing it well enough? Uh, uh, there's obviously room for improvement, which is why we've got the elephant in the room. What mechanisms are in place for that debriefing? And I presume that a lot of these anaesthetists are on different shifts, so they kind of end a shift in the middle of the night and sort of wander home, not necessarily having that sense of some group or some person to talk to straight away. Yeah, and it's a terrible feeling. If you've, if you've had a really difficult case or you've lost a patient on the table, um, you need to be able to debrief and, and, and get down from that position of stress and, and depression. And, and we engage with our patients beforehand and meet them and discuss their case. And so it's, you know, the added stress of knowing that person, not necessarily intimately, but knowing that person uh, really does add to the burden of, of a, a challenging outcome or just the stress of keeping someone alive and safe during a very complex operation can be incredibly draining. So after shift work, yes, you, you, we need to immediately have a group session with the surgeons, with the nurses in the room, because everyone is participating in those sort of environments. Uh, Professor Scott, when you're in a medical environment, when you just said everyone is participating in that environment, how easy is it to see, wow, well, what I'm going through must be normal because everyone's going through it. So there's kind of this normalisation of the stress and the responsibility that's at the hands of so many medical professionals. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think that's it's old school thinking. Um, you know, to expect that you can cope, that it's not going to affect you, um, that the burden is not going to grow with repeated episodes is, is not realistic in, in today's uh, understanding of these sort of problems. So we're really working very hard to open up people's ideas and, and minds to having good, good health care, having good mental health care and supports. And we can do that at the workplace and we can pr you know, progress that on through to their home environment. And actually having good family support is, is a critical element to this, family and friends. Professor David Scott, so appreciate your time today. Our best of luck with it today. We do hope that some things come out of this, some positive moves come out of it. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Kimmy.